Today I am going to show you how to do lesson 6.4 in, in, in Visions for fifth grade. This is dealing with dividing decimals and when you get a remainder, what you can do with it. So I will show you the steps that we have. This is a little bit trickier for some of the students. Once again, I want them to make sure that they are taking home their math diaries because we did write down decimal division with remainders. Now, a few of the questions on the homework do not have a remainder and it's just like the other day's homework. The few that do have a remainder, we actually put a star by them. So we have just the same as before, write the division problem. Number two, double check the decimal. It may be invisible at the end. That is an important thing to remember. Number three, draw your lines neatly. Number four, you just regularly divide. And then number five tells you what to do if there is a remainder. If you have a remainder, you may have to add a decimal. Um, you must add a zero and bring it down. So I will show you exactly what I mean by that. And then number six, bring the decimal straight up. So I am going to show you quite a few examples of what we are talking about here. Now, just like um, how I said on the other day, I like to do it on lined paper because it does help us follow along um, just better with our lines. So the first one I'm going to do, now like I said, all of tonight's homework, you may not have to add a zero. Some of them you do. So for example, 37 divided by four. 37 divided by four. So once again, draw your lines. Now I don't see a decimal here. The students know that that means it's invisible at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it there just to be safe. Now four cannot go into three. However, four can go into 37 nine times. Four times nine is 36. So, so far there is nothing new. Now seven minus six is one, three minus three is zero, so I'm not worried about that. Now here is where before we would have written nine remainder one. For the decimals, what they want us to do is add that zero and then bring it down. Now I have the number 10. Well, four can go into 10 two times because four times two is eight. Subtract. So all I did, and we practiced a ton of problems today in class, at least 10 of these. You add a zero and you bring it down. Now I have 10 minus eight, that's two. Oh, I still have a remainder. So now I'm gonna add another zero and bring that down. I'm going to keep going until I get a remainder of zero. Now, for the purpose in fifth grade, you won't have to go past adding two zeros. And the students did very well in this today. So every time we add a zero. Now four goes into 20, five times and four times five is 20 and now I have zero. Now one of the biggest problems is the kids we do all of this work I mean we just did a ton of work we had to add two zeros bring them down and they forget that my answer is not 925. Remember I only started with 37. If I have 37 dollars and I'm sharing it with four people each person cannot get 925. So you have to remember that your decimal goes straight up. So my answer is nine and 25 hundredths. Let's do another problem. I'm gonna do 19 divided by five. I wanna make sure that glare isn't in there. Okay, once again, I don't see a decimal, so I'm gonna put my decimal at the end. 
and then I'm going to draw my lines. Five cannot go into one, but five can go into 19 three times. Five times three is 15, subtract. Nine minus five is four. Now that would be my remainder. So before I would have said three remainder four, but we're not doing that anymore. We're gonna add a zero and then bring it down. Now five can go into 48 times because five times four, eight is 40. Subtract and I get zero. Now, once again, my answer is not 38 because I have to remember to bring that decimal straight up. And how I know I bring it straight up is because there's no decimal over here. We will be learning what to do if there's a decimal over here. Right now, there's no decimal over here, so this one goes straight up. So my answer is 3.8 or 3 and 8 tenths. 3 and 8 tenths. We can try a few more. Let's do one more with this whole number on the inside. So once again, I don't see a decimal, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it there at the end. Now draw your lines, and then you can start your division problem. Four cannot go into one, but four can go into 15 three times because four times three is 12, subtract. Five minus two is three, one minus one is zero, so I'm not too concerned about that one. But I don't wanna say three remainder three, so I'm gonna add my zero and drop it. Now four can go into 30, eight times, oh no, I'm sorry, not eight times, seven times, seven times four is 28, subtract, and I need to borrow, 10 minus eight is two, oh man, let's see, I need to add another zero and bring it down. So notice what I did, when I subtracted, even though I brought this zero down, I got 30, 7 times 4 is 28. I subtracted and I got 2. I still had a remainder. So I needed to add another 0 and bring it down. Now 4 can go into 25 times. 4 times 5 is 20. And now I am done with my problem because I have a remainder of 0. Now don't forget, there is no decimal over here. So this one just goes straight up. And my answer is 3 and 75 hundredths. Three and 75 hundredths. I am going to do two other types of problems as well, or one other type of problem. So we have 32 and 4 tenths divided by <coughs> 5. I'm going, now this one does have a decimal, so I do not need to add it. This one does have a decimal, so I don't need to add it. I'm going to draw my lines. Five cannot go into three, but um, five can go into 32 six times because five times six is 30. Subtract. Two minus zero is two. Bring down your four. Five goes into 24 four times because five times four is 20. Subtract. Ooh, now this time I get a remainder of four. I can't leave that remainder, so I'm gonna add a zero and I'm gonna bring it down. Now I think I can do this. Five can go into 40 eight times because five times eight is 40 and I now have my remainder of zero that I need. 
Once again, don't forget, there's no decimal over here, so that means this decimal goes straight up. And my answer is six and 48 hundredths. Six and 48 hundredths. So you really have to always double check and see, one, do you need to add a decimal at the end? You do if it's invisible, just go ahead and put it there like the other three problems. If not, work it out, but sometimes you might have to add that zero and bring it down. Let's try one more. Now, some of them you are not going to have to add zeros, and that's okay. You won't always have to add zeros. Let's give this one a try. So what we have here is 23 and 6 tenths, and then I have my 8 on the outside. So you always want to make sure that your numbers are lined up. So I am doing two, 23 and 6 tenths divided by 8. I already have a decimal here, so I do not need to add it at the end. Now, 8 cannot go into 2, so I'm going to put a 0. 8 can go into 23 two times, eight times two is 16, subtract. I cannot do three minus six, so I need to borrow, then I have 13. Um, 13 minus six is seven, bring down my six. Eight can go into 76 nine times. 8 times 9 is 72, subtract, 6 minus 2 is 4, I have nothing else to bring down. So before we would kind of stop there because there's nothing else to bring down, but now add that 0 in and bring the 0 down. So add the 0, bring it down. 8 can go into 40 five times because eight times five is 40. And then I have my remainder of zero. Now there is no decimal out here, so that means this decimal just goes straight up, and my answer is two and 95 hundredths. So once again, instead of leaving my remainder, I added a zero and I brought it down. Then we have one more problem that we'll work on. Once again, this one already has a decimal, so I am not adding it at the end. Draw your lines. Four cannot go into three, but four can go into 33, nine, um, eight times, because eight times four is 32. Subtract. Three minus two is one, bring down your eight. Four can go into 18 four times because four times four is 16, subtract. Eight minus six is two. I don't want us to put remainders. Add that zero and bring it down. Four can go into 25 times. Four times five is 20, and you are left with your remainder zero now. Once again, there is no decimal over here, so this one just goes straight up and my answer is eight and 45 hundredths. Eight and 45 hundredths. Now for tonight's homework, not every problem is going to have you add a zero and bring it down. Only the ones that we start. If it's not like that, it's just regular division with decimals. So that's the video that we did yesterday. In that case, you should end up with a remainder of zero and you do not need to add any zeros. So today, we really focused on adding that zero and bringing it down until our problem finally came to a remainder of zero. The biggest thing that I notice that kids are doing is they're forgetting to bring the decimal. If they're doing the multiplication right, they're forgetting to bring that decimal up. And I told them that's a very, 800, 845 is very different than eight and 45 hundreds, two very different numbers. So make sure that you're adding that zero and bringing it down. Otherwise, you just have regular, Decimal division, just like we did yesterday.